Welcome to the Transform Your Wealth and Health Podcast, where experts in wealth, health, and fitness help transform your life. Here's your host, Andy Arder. Welcome to the Transform Your Wealth and Health Podcast. We have a very special episode today, Back from the Brink. Not only is it live, but we have two people to interview too, both of which want to talk about our mental health as they both are addicts in recovery. Former guest Tony Kelly, who was a professional footballer with Stoke City, Bristol City, Bury and Orient, and also a gambling addict that founded the Red Card Gambling Association charity. And John Thompson, who's been a journalist, broadcaster, filmmaker, and author, and previously found himself homeless through his addiction to alcohol. So guys, welcome to the show. Thanks, welcome, Andy. Andy. John, can I turn to you first of all? Sure. Would you mind telling us a little bit about your background and some of the issues and problems that you, you had in the past? Um, I, I was born in Glasgow, but uh, I grew up in South Africa and Zimbabwe. So when I, was, when I was nine, my family immigrated to South Africa. So I spent, um, I spent 18 years, really the formative years in the, of my life was spent growing up there, um, South Africa and Zimbabwe. And, um, and with hindsight now, and what I've learned at, in my, um, I'll, I'll be eight years sober next next week. But what I've learned in my eight years is that I'm a really sensitive kind of guy. I'm a very creative kind of guy, but I'm also I'm also really 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 sensitive. Yeah. So I grew up um, a kid, just a you know just a young lad growing up in a very angry austere type of environment. You know, it was uh, during apartheid. There right. was a lot yeah, going well, was, on. I you know, say, so why was that? Yeah. 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 So and there was a lot of violence around. You know and. Um, you know, when I left South Africa at the age of 25, I can honestly say it, I'd, I'd been, it, that was normal for me. That had, I'd been kind of conditioned to that mm. way of thinking and, and what, I'd, what I'd seen. And, and I'd witnessed a lot of violence as, as a teenager, not, not in the home, but you know, like I'd witnessed murder and I'd, I'd, I'd witnessed extreme types of violence. Yeah. And that affected me. That did affect me, and um, also I lost my right leg <coughs> below the knee in a really bad car accident when I was twenty. And um, oh, wow. so, when you combine all mm. of this kind of early, early life trauma yeah. with someone who's very, very sensitive, mm -hmm. um, it's not really surprising that you know um, that I would then develop a crutch uh, or a way to cope, yeah. and 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 that coping mechanism for me was alcohol mm. yeah do you, do you think you had an addictive nature i do have an addictive yeah. personality yeah yeah i think, yeah. Similar. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. i'm similar when I, when I look back to little things um you know what, i know on john's side you know people addiction people our specialist uh counselors, they talk about trauma and childhood trauma and things that have happened mm -hmm. in the past um but when i think about little things such as you know this, <laughs> this sounds ridiculous really but 10 years old um, I used to play marbles at school, you know, marbles, I was absolutely crazy with marbles and um, the feeling of winning, yeah, and then you upgrade to ball bearings and, and colourful marbles and I'd come home and from school cry my eyes out to my mum, can I have 10p bag of marbles in the morning, couldn't go to school yeah. without a bag of marbles and that feeling of winning and losing, whether or not, you know, that, that feeling manifested itself in terms of going forward into the later years about, you know, the feeling of winning and losing, Yeah, you know, so yeah. It's, it's really yeah. interesting now. Things can affect you later. Yeah, could be related, mm. uh, mm. and you just don't know. That yeah, no, the yeah. mind's a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's. Um, I, I mean, I, I can only, I can only kind of analyze it now, mm. because of what I know now. Um, you know what I've learned, and yeah. um, mm -hmm. but it took, it took me to to reach uh, an an awful, awful, part, a place in my life to. Mm. You know, when 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 I hit, when I when I hit a rock bottom, I was I was in a homeless hostel in Ipswich, of all places, um, surrounded surrounded by empty vodka bottles, and I still didn't know what was wrong with me. So did you did you lose the house or what you yeah home, yeah etc. To, to obviously to end up in home? yeah yeah no I mean when I was up in Glasgow, I mean I, I started working for Scottish Television in 1994, and I worked my way up from from the bottom. I started off as as a as a as a, an audience researcher, and then and then and then just moved my, my way up into research and politics, then research and current affairs, then mm -hmm. um, under, under undercover researcher for in, in current affairs, then into the newsroom as a as a production journalist, mm -hmm. stroke reporter. I would do reports as well um, in the newsroom, then into sport, and then into, in, into football. Scottish football, Scottish football, yeah. So you got to use a good place then. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was. Um, I loved it. I loved. Mm-hmm. I loved my job. I loved it. Yeah. It was. Um, it, you know, working in that, doing that that job was. It wasn't. It, it wasn't a job for me. It was, mm. it was, a, way, it was a way of life because yeah, yeah. you had all that kind of camaraderie within the yeah. people, within the team, you know, and yeah. we used to do everything together. Well, not everything, but we, we, did, <laughs> we, did, we did most things together. Definitely. And, um, and uh, but, it, but, but all, what was running tandem to that was this, because it's a progressive illness. It, mm. it, I was drinking more and more and more and more and it's, more. That's interesting, yeah, because it's with the gambling, it's, it's, I say it's, to people, it's a gradual thing. Yeah. You know, and you don't even realise it. So this is the addictive nature we're talking about. So yeah. what about the people that, in your case, Tony, mm. you, you like to gamble, but what about the people that you know sit at home and they, they gamble on the lottery and they watch the TV and they have the odd bet here and now? Mm. What about those people? Could they get sucked into gambling addiction? Yeah, there, there's always that risk. That's what I say to people. You know, Anyone that places a bet, <clears throat> whether it's the national, whether it's the lottery, whether it's scratch card, whatever it is, you, there's always that risk. And so... Us guys, you know, the general public, we don't, you know, we don't get in unless you're in that profession of, you know, counselling or psychotherapy, etc. And, and we understand how our brains work. Um, we, you know, we, we won't understand why some people get addicted and why some people don't. But the, but there are, you know, um, biological reasons why that happens. I mean, we've got just recently done a video regarding exactly that, how the brain works, and, and you know, reward centres and brain cells and yeah. dopamine and all that stuff. So it's, that's that's why you find some people will get addicted, some people won't. Yeah. Well, funny enough, mm. yesterday I had another previous guest on the show come over, and yeah. he's a, a fitness guy yeah. called Marvin and Roses. Um, after we'd done a fitness session with Marvin here mm. yesterday, we all felt a little bit high and a little bit good, and we were talking about it. And Marvin said, "That's the endorphins kicking in." Mm-hmm. So you, there we are. I mean, yeah. it's exactly the, yeah. the same kind of thing. The, yeah. the mind and the body and the brain all work in conjunction. Mm. Hence, why on my podcast I do like to talk about the health and yeah. the wealth health in conjunction wealth. with yeah. each other. And we spoke mm. about this previous time. Right. They, mm. they, yeah. they really do they really work do, yeah. in tandem with each other. Yeah. And fitness is also for me mental health. Mm. because mm. you cannot do things at a very high level at least just to function mm. you need decent mental health so mm. I'm, gl- I'm glad you guys have come over to talk about this because yeah. it, it needs talking about even more yeah well in terms of mental health it's huge in terms of addiction you know the i think more people uh within uh addiction fields etc are now realizing that you know there's a massive issue connected with mental health yeah. and, and gambling addiction you mm. know we do some work obviously you know the work we do we'll talk about that later but you know when we talk about you know suicide with with the former gambling gambling addicts you know we've got a few slides we do where a 26 year old for instance jumped out of his window his balcony and killed himself because of his gambling addiction mm. so we know there's a strong link uh, with mental health which is why we, we we talk a lot about that and you know working a little bit with mind etc mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think it's i think this is one of the things that i'm 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 very interested in is is the suicide thing, you know, because um, I mean I I don't I've I've been doing live broadcasts on my own Facebook page for a number of months now, yeah. and on, on different aspects of mental health, um, substance misuse, mm. and and, mm. and um, recovery, and depression, anxiety, yeah. Yeah. and suicide. Um, I've I've tried to take my own life twice, you know. I yeah. I don't I don't I don't that's, have a that's interesting, sorry, John. I've always yeah. wondered. Um, when I talk to my you know therapists and counsellor etc I've always wondered what it takes to get to that point to cross that mm. line of, of no return yeah. as far as you're concerned there's no hope that, that's that's the end as far as you're concerned and I've suffered with you know depression I've suffered with anxiety and sleepless nights and all the rest of it but I never actually got to a point where I said to myself oh that's it you right. know and some people yeah. do and mm. that's fascinating mm. I don't mind talking about it. I've yeah. talked about it. I've written about it. It's in there, mm. you know. Um, the first time was the second time was when my when I hit my rock bottom that day in Ipswich, um, almost eight years ago. Um, I tried to throw myself out of a window. Well, I did throw myself out of a window, but I got stuck in the window. Um, <laughs> Big, how big were you in them days, John? I no, no, I, 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 hadn't, I hadn't eaten. I, had, I just got stuck in. I got stuck in the window. Um, but I mean, I, I, I was hanging out this window, and um, if this wasn't serious, it'd be quite. Well, the yeah, thing quite is, comical. it's okay. It's okay. It's 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 okay because when I do share about this this story, people mm. people do chuckle, and I've shared about yeah. it in you know like AA and stuff like that, and yeah. it does it yeah. does get a bit of a laugh. But it was because um, 
when I was hanging out the window, I, I remember th- it was bizarre. I could see people walking in the street below, mm-hmm. and I remember thinking, "This is what half the glass half full, half empty means." Mm-hmm. And I'd never understood what that meant mm-hmm. up until that point. You know, that particular yeah. single moment in time. How yeah. high was you up, John? I was two two floors up. I, I was high enough to mm-hmm. to do so. I just wanted it to stop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first time was the that was that was that was Christmas Eve, two thousand six. But at the at the point when you're at the win, window, was there was there any fear that oh fucking hell, I'm going to drop no, this bank no, no. be smashing the pavement, this is no, whatever. There's no was there any fear of what's actually going to happen in, in the next two seconds. I, I wanted I, I wanted at the very least to be to be I just wanted to be stopped because I knew that I was hurting people. Why I was causing chaos with the amount that I was yeah, drinking, same. you know. I mean, I'd, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, I'd, I'd, I'd have had a very successful career. I was married. Yeah. I had a lovely mm-hmm. home. I had lots of friends in Glasgow. Um, I, tell, I, tell us more about the mm-hmm. the career and what you was doing and, and how it spiraled to, to where it was, John. Well, I was just um, uh, I, I was I'd become so my my tolerance for alcohol had become. It was, it was just unbelievable. What was you? What was you drinking? Well, I'd get up in the morning and I'd have. Uh, I'd already. I'd hidden um, uh, vodka. Again, I've, this is all in the book. Yeah, um, yeah. You were about your book in yeah. Yeah, 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 I'd, yeah. I'd replace shampoo with uh, vodka. Um, so I had. I had vodka in the shower. <laughs> so I would, I would. I would. I would wake up in the morning. Yeah. Um, and my my then wife, um, you know, she, it, it, it's, it's awful. It, it, she didn't know what was going on. Right. I was going to say. Um, so you, you, your wife wasn't. Aware of, of the extent of your drinking? No, not I, I did. I did admit to it later on, but my my ex wife didn't, didn't have a clue, and I, I still yeah. I still feel awful about that. But I I drink vodka in the morning in the shower, and then grab my briefcase, get dressed, walk into the studios at STV. I would um, go into Marks and Spencers, get two small bottles of red wine, get to the office, go into the viewing room, have two small bottles of red wine, wow. then sit down and then carry on and working into the pub at twelve o'clock, one o'clock. Mm. Uh, maybe two, three pints or three glasses of red wine. Back to work. Sometimes I would leave the office saying that I was go- I would go for a sandwich. Mm. Um, you know, ha- halfway through the afternoon, but I, w- I wouldn't. I go to the pub. Yeah, I go to another pub where people didn't go to. Right. Funny. So you was going to the pub at, in your lunchtime, and when yeah, you I go- finish football and work, I'll be in the bookies. You'd be in the bookies yeah. at lunchtime. Yeah. See how it, it's, it's the similarities yeah. there, you know. Yeah, um, but yeah, and then I'd go to the pub after work, mm. have maybe three, four pints. Walk home, go into Marks and Spencers, pick up tea, pick up four bottles of red wine, go into the toilets of Marks and Spencers, down one bottle of red wine, and like wow. down it, <laughs> and then three bottles of red red wine in the bag still there. Then get down to the near where the house where the house was, into an alley, down another bottle of red wine. Oh I still have two bottles of red wine. Yeah, yeah. Get into the house, hide one, and one was for dinner for myself. But and, but um, when you got into the house, obviously there was there must have been occasion when you when you got back to the missus that you, you slushed. No, no. Because because of the progressive, you topping up. My, my I was just topping up. My yeah, tolerance right. had become. That's uh, why. Uh. That's why. Whenever I, I I I if I when I the, in, during the times when I would end up in in, in detox, yeah, I, right. I I they, they they couldn't give me enough Librium. Um, yeah. I, I was climbing the walls. I mean that, yeah, that's yeah. that's how bad it was. I think Tony has said in the past that mm. um, he didn't let his family know the extent of his problems either yeah I mean the, the one of the, that's one of the main reasons why I brought my book out um, because obviously I've got a big family yep. uh, tell us about the book while we're, while the we're book on the came subject, yeah. it's, it's, it's a funny story with the book because um, 2013 I, I was talking to my sister and one or two little snippets were coming out in the press uh, about gambling addiction one or two footballers I remember Michael Chopra coming out but not not in a big way you know mm. they're just you know little snippets and Gambling, you know, with the FOBTs and this, that, the other promotion. So gambling was getting quite, you know, big within within society. So my sister said, "You should, you should try and put something to print." Now, in my mind, I'm thinking, "I can't, can't write a book. Come on, you know what I mean?" So she goes, "No, just, just start writing something, and you know, we, we can put something together." So I started writing one night, and this is with no ghostwriter, no laptop, mm-hmm. no computer, no co-writer, no nothing. Just my trusted biro and A4 paper, and I just started writing. And the strange thing is, I mean, I look back now, I couldn't stop writing. You know, I'll be, I'll be at my exes, I'll be at the door where the door was, I'll be elsewhere. You're writing through the night, hours on end, you know, and then all of a sudden, 18 months later, mm. I had this manuscript up here yeah. and it was done. It was a bit cathartic for you. Then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, as far as therapeutic for me was, actually, which is what people talk about now, because I couldn't stop writing. It was like getting a real load off my, you know, off my yeah. mind. Um, 
you know, exposing it, you know, publicly now, talking about it, and we, we, mm. we say about talking about it. Yeah. So that was a big help getting the book out. It was then we sent it to publishers and it came out 2014. Yeah, it's a good book, by the way. Thank you. No, you know, I've said this before in the past. Yeah, you have. And I will show you actually later on. Uh, the pile of books I've got upstairs, yeah. brilliant books no doubt, but there's about a dozen of them now, yeah. and they're up there, all of them with four to five pages read, yeah. and I said to Tony at the time, I'm either gonna read this right the way through, yeah, yeah. or four or five yeah, pages, did, yeah. and it will go with the rest of them. Yeah, he did. Right? Yeah. So I've got even more since then, Tony, with the four or five <laughs> pages, and some of these people are very famous authors, right. so you managed to jump in front of them, by the way. But I enjoyed it, I enjoyed it, and as I said, it, it, then it gave all my family and friends and everybody I know, you know, to realise where I've been, you know, and that was that was important to me, because I think there's a lot of ignorance about gambling, um, a lot of lack of understanding, so it was, it was good to get it out there to show people this is what can happen. Yeah. yeah. John, what about yourself, John? I think, I think what, you've, what you've just said is spot on. I think there's a lot of, um, um, I'll, I'll, I think people don't know, there's, there's still a lot to learn about, mm. about addiction. You know, and um, and and up until a couple of months ago, I I thought that there was more more awareness and more tolerance around around addiction, yeah. and and but I don't I think the stigma is still massive. I think the stigma right. still is because yeah, um, <clears throat> I've had lots of people message me mm. um, who are struggling with with the booze, mm. um, and 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 they they, they they they're asking me for help because yeah. because and they want it kept. They want it kept quiet. So yeah. that in itself tells me that the stigma wow. remains, that people are still ashamed. Yes. They're still definitely. embarrassed to ask for help. <coughs> Excuse me, definitely. And <clears throat> and that is wrong and, and, and that that is that is that is costing lives. Yeah. There are people out there who, who are not asking for help because they're too ashamed. Definitely. Um, and that's because there are there are still many people out there saying, Well, why can't you stop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're also saying, Well, there are a lot of people out there still who who think that when someone asks for help that it's a sign of weakness. Yeah, mm, exactly. And it's not a yeah. sign of weakness yeah. at all. No, I think that's, you're right when you touch on the shame and embarrassment because that's what, that's what a lot of you know, addicts feel, you know, yeah. that shame and embarrassment. If you're, mm. especially, particularly if, you work, if you're working you know, in, in certain fields, you know, football or high-end fields and all yeah. that, you, know, you don't want to be seen as a weak person. No. You, know? you can imagine John working in the environment that he worked mm. in. And you was yeah. going off and drinking, etc. If, no. if you'd yeah. been caught out, John, would they have sacked you? I, I will say that um, Scottish television helped me immensely, mm. immensely. They couldn't have been more supportive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they did their best to help me. Yeah. Um, they, you know, I was I was signed off sick for a long, long time, and and mm -hmm. they, 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 the help and support was there. Yeah. But the thing is. They didn't have the experience to give me the help and support that I needed because because right. mm. this is before I was I would even admit that that I was an alcoholic. Yeah. So that that is a different kind of help and support that, that yeah. I needed, and I only got that when I ended up in in rehab in, in two thousand and ten. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Mm. What do you think the general um, help is like out there for people? I think it's um, I I think uh, from what I've heard, I, I know a lot of people who work within uh, the field of recovery um, mm. in with regards to substance misuse mm. uh, funding has been massively cut mm. um, and and they're struggling yeah and I think that um, I've, I've heard whether this is true and I, I have heard this from professionals that uh, that home detoxes are now the way forward for people who are struggling with, with in particular the booze mm. but the thing is I that's that's that doesn't have a, a proven record yeah. really you know it's mm. a, a person has to be taken away yeah. And and then they have to they have to be somewhere where it's safe mm -hmm. with the right experience around them where they have to face themselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You're not going to get that sitting no, at home. No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. On, on my side, with the you know uh, help that's out there. Yeah. So there's lots. <clears throat> what I've found in the last four years since being running Red Card Gambling Sport Project, what I've found is there's lots of treatment out there. <clears throat> you know, I've met with all the professionals in the gambling industry. Um, lots of meetings, done a couple of workshops with, with treatment centres such as Gordon Moody Association. So the treatment's out there, yeah. but where we're coming from is education awareness is yes. not out there. Yeah. There's more of that, which is why our brochure, Red Car Gambling Sport Project, Education Awareness Prevention, and that's that's what we're about. Mm -hmm. you know? so it's I think, a different angle. Yeah, so there's a lot more of, of, a lot more work to be done. Um, we'll continue to do it. We get yeah. help from the um, big lottery. Yeah, yeah. tell us about that, Tony. Yeah, the big lottery, I mean, they do different awards um, for organisations that you know, have a social impact, mm -hmm. support organisations. So they've supported us for the last six months. We got some funding six months ago. We'll get some 
more funding in the next few months mm. uh, and then eventually um, the aim is with red card is to go full time probably year 18 months time yeah. we'll go full time who are you looking um, to educate basically anybody and everybody but in particular uh, young adults I right. mean we do a lot of work with young adults so at the moment we're going to schools we're going to youth projects uh, we've just teamed up with an organisation NCS uh, we've teamed up with the Hive in Scotland, so they they run programs for fifteen to eight, sorry, to sixteen twenty four year olds. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do workshops, and we've got an agreement with them at the moment. So there's lots of things going on in terms of agreements and contracts with working with youth and young people. Mm, sure, because yeah, at the end of the day, they're the next generation. Yeah. So they they need to be educated, and then parents as well. But we can go on to that later. Mm, yeah. Mm. So just getting back to the book slide. Yes, sir. Did you guys leave anything out that you wish you'd have put in? So, but by the way, John, <coughs> your book, we've not mentioned the name of your book, well, I haven't at least, mm -hmm. is Seer, The Man Who Sees Tomorrow. So, so what some of the So, gratuitous plug. Yeah, here. why not? Why not? Yeah, so, so John, what, is, what does that yeah. mean? The Man Who Sees Tomorrow. Yeah. Seer, Seer is an old name or an old uh, kind of medieval name for yeah. um, a clairvoyant. Right. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so the book itself um, focuses on my five months when I was in rehab. So oh, it's right, set okay. it's set there. Right, brilliant. Um, so it tells the story of of me arriving and then how they helped me. It also looks back at my life and everything that happened. So when I talked about the trauma and yeah. life and growing yeah. up and things like that, yeah. my career and broadcasting and, and all yeah. of that, the drinking. So it tells the story of how I ended up in rehab, but mm -hmm. it, it focuses on. On, on, on that time in five months. So that's on Amazon, yeah? <clears throat> that's on Amazon, yeah. yeah. And um, but when I was in rehab, I um, I was two, I was three months sober before I went into rehab because I, I had to be. Yeah. Um, oh, is that the way they, they make you? No, my I, my parents allowed me to stay with them, but only in the condition that oh, right. that I didn't drink. If okay. they had any um, if they had any any inkling that I was that I was doing something that I shouldn't be doing, yeah. I would then be back on the streets. So. Yeah. So, and, but by that by that point, after that rock bottom day, you know, when I tried to throw myself out the window, I I kind of surrendered to it. I I didn't I didn't want it. I I'd had enough. I'd had, had enough. enough. Yeah, I, yeah. That, right. I'd, I'd, <coughs> I'd, I'd had enough. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have a drink for I think it was twelve weeks, mm -hmm. and then I went in, and it was a couple of weeks into rehab, and I was standing by myself when I was in rehab, and uh, I didn't have I didn't have much left. You know, mm. there was nothing left. I didn't yeah. know where I was going to end up, anything like yeah. that. And yeah. um, and and then something, something really for me anyway. Something really incredible happened. I uh, I said three things to myself. I said, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm 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 not I'm not religious, but I do have faith. Yeah. I do believe, mm -hmm. and I pray, mm -hmm. and I meditate. Um, and I said three things to myself. I've always been that way. And I said, I can't do this anymore. My way in the world doesn't work. I want to do it your way, and mm. it's and I'm really meant that for me yeah, here. Yeah. Mm. And as soon as I said that, that's when I felt something. Something mm, happened. Amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's funny there's stories like that about you know people's personal you know stories. Something that happens or something that's you know happening that's going to change change the future or change the way they feel. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know you're aware of my um, faith, Andy. Mm, but, yes. Yeah. But just yes, a little. Yes. I'll just touch upon that. What happened to me in 2010 stroke 11? I was working for Network Rail. Um, really good job, etc. And we don't get visitors. We're in a you know remote part of the track, um, signalling trains, etc. And I had a visit on a Sunday afternoon. Um, and as I said, we don't get visitors, so it was surprising. He's only going to be he was either going to be a regional manager or no one. Hmm. Uh, and there was a guy at the door. Didn't recognise him. Uh, let him in. He said he's the local chaplain for Network Rail. And I thought, well, I've been here ten years, and I've, I've never met a local never chap. Heard so, of probably, yeah. so it was quite strange. And, and he came in, and he and we sat down. And at this point, it was at the point when I was just splitting up with uh, my ex girlfriend of twenty odd years. Uh, my life was still a mess. I was fucking just about to go bankrupt. So the whole, the whole lot, my life was a bit of a mess at that point. And we sat down and we talked. Now, going way back, you know, I, I've always been religious. I've always had faith, but it's not been strong. Yeah, I've never had that personal relationship with God in, in my mm -hmm. in my life, my life and my eyes. So we talked. Um, he said a few scriptures, talked about my life and where I'm going, the future, etc. And then he wrote out a prayer, uh, which at the time I didn't know what it was called. Um, obviously, I do now. It's called a salvation prayer, um, and I still have that prayer today. It's in my Bible at home. Um, and when he wrote that, it wasn't a case of <clears throat> him leaving that day and me leaving work that day and. 
you know, all of a sudden everything's great and my life's brilliant and things have, mm. you know, changed dramatically. It wasn't, it wasn't like that. It was a case that he's, with through faith and through him and through that conversation, it was meant to happen uh, and it was going to be a gradual thing. And then as time went on, again, it came to two, three years later where I was going to write the book. So that was meant to happen. How I wrote the book and spent those hours on then doing it, you yeah. know, again, meant to happen. I'm yeah. meant to be doing what I'm doing today. So as a gradual thing, uh, a year ago, my local church became one of our sponsors, uh, and that's the local church I go to to worship. And, um, and then I got baptized eight months ago. Mm-hmm. So it's all a progression of where I'm meant to be, what's meant to happen in my life, and in my in yeah. my view, personal view again, mm-hmm. it's God's way of, of putting me on the right path mm-hmm. and then doing something okay. positive from a negative. That's brilliant. Yeah. So, so so hopefully somebody's watching today mm-hmm. that needs a bit of help and yeah. wants to get themselves into recovery. Mm-hmm. What do you guys have to say to those people that well, are listening? Yeah. But you know as well as I do, mm. you know, you've got to hear things a thousand times or maybe <laughs> yeah. even once that that yeah. clicks with yeah. you. So I mean my book, Red Card, which is basically battles my um, details my battle with gambling addiction throughout my life, uh, throughout the football career. So it goes right yeah. through. Um, and I say to people now the one thing that I didn't do um, was basically ask for help. You know, I, mm-hmm. I had family, friends, I had um, lots of people talking to me and giving me the warning signs and saying, you got a bit better be careful with your gambling. Um, but I never really took it in, it never really registered. Uh, and as an addict, you know, it's a compulsion, you can't stop. Yeah. Uh, and that's, you have to ask for, ask for help, you have to get help as quickly mm-hmm. as possible. And I got help when it was too late. Mm-hmm. Um, by that, I mean, I got my house repossessed, car repossessed, 192,000 pound bankruptcy file I had. Um, and, and yeah, and <laughs> you should, we've said this before, Tony. Mm. You should have been on Easy Street by then. Yeah, you? exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Um, so bank book was bank going bank book was was a big step because it obviously it wiped out my hundred ninety two thousand pound debt. But then from then it's a question of right, you, you've got to move forward now. I had the counselling, which wasn't just about the gambling; it was about my life, reevaluating my life, looking to the future, looking for hope. Uh, so we talked about all these things um, and fortunately for me again you know through my, through my faith I think I've managed to get to a point now where I can help others which is great it's a great place to be yeah. um, so the most important message for me is that you've got to ask for help and don't don't be ashamed to ask for help you know because you, you've got to talk about it to someone you know if it's a family member it's a, it's a friend a work colleague whoever it is mm. you know talk to somebody and then yeah. get help because red card we do our workshop on um awareness um, workshops and presentations but we also have a facility where they can talk freely to us mm. uh, to one of the addiction team we ref- we can refer them to treatment centers so yeah yeah that's 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 the way forward mm-hmm. yeah. okay and what about yourself John again it's asking for help it really is asking for help and I think um, when somebody asks for help especially when when generally I think people when they're surrounded by people who again will, will see it as being a sign of weakness yeah. mm-hmm. to ask for help mm-hmm. that in itself tells me that when someone does ask for help that is a that is that is a true sign of real courage because yeah. when you do something despite knowing that you could be judged for it you could yeah, be you, you could be mm-hmm. mocked for it you yeah. could be yeah and it does happen let's not let's yeah, not yeah, let's yeah, not mess yeah, around yeah, here you know um john's um, right because it's hard to actually come out of denial you know, it's so really, I, yeah, I understand. Massive. I do understand why people can't talk. Yeah, about I was going to push you guys on this mm. point because a lot of people who have issues that might be listening, mm. this is going to just flow over them. Mm. So, how do you get to that point that you say to them, "Look, wake yourself up. You know, you've got to do something now." Mm. I can only speak on. I can only use my own experience when it comes to this. Yeah. I can't. I can't talk on behalf of anyone else. I can only speak mm. from what I experienced. I had to be broken. Mm. I had to be broken. Nasty, okay? but yeah. Physically, spiritually, mentally, yeah. before I would surrender and ask for help. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Most people out there won't end up like that. Mm. So um, I, I had to. I had to be hurt before I was ready to actually yeah. ask yeah. for help. And and it's not unusual for someone to have to end up on their knees before yeah. they they actually ask for help. You That's see. Just- Mm. Because if you, if someone's sitting at home right now and they're maybe having a bottle or two bottles of wine a night, and they know, they know within themselves that they, that that 
this is not right. They mm. know that they're dependent on it. They know yeah. that it's causing. See, alcohol. I'm not against alcohol. I have to say this. Exactly. I, I, I would say the same. Come on, correct. Yeah, come on, and come on, I, I'm not. I'm not anti-alcohol. Mm. I, not at all. I go. I go to football all the time. Mm. I'm surrounded by mates who drink. It doesn't mm -hmm. bother me. Mm. I'm not anti it. Um, and so, but what I will say is, when it comes to when it when it comes to the booze, you know, I mean, it's um, a lot of people will think that they're alcoholic but in actual fact they're not you know you mm. can drink two bottles of, of wine a, a night yeah. and if you can still yeah. get up in the morning go to work do a good mm. job function and probably, function yeah. and mm. bad things don't happen mm. alcoholism for me is when when drinking and then bad things happen yeah mm. yeah that that that's what alcoholism is yeah. Yeah. um so the, there is there is a there is a line between that but um at the end of the day and this may sound a bit harsh but um it's not meant to but really a person really has to want it yeah, yeah, okay. yeah that's you the, have to want it. That's, that's one of that's our last slide on one of our presentations. Yeah, yeah. You've got to want help. You've got yeah. to want help. Yeah. It's got to come from deep it. within because, yeah, with the gambling addiction, similar to alcohol, you know, there's only one way you're going to go. You're either going to end up in prison or you're going to end up six foot under. You know, mm. eventually, you know, if you don't, they lead down the help. same path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. it's a funny thing, but I think mm. you're dead right, guys. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and and the harsh. When I was in rehab, <clears throat> I'd only been there a couple of weeks, and there was a whole lot of us sitting in a room one day. And there must have been about 20 or 30 of us. And we were waiting for someone to come in and do a share. It was someone who would come in and, you know, talk about- Share this, stories. To share stories right. about, you know, so someone from the outside. Yeah. And before they came in, um, one of the counselors said, said to us, right, I want each one of you to look to your left and then look to your right at the people on either mm -hmm. side of you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, only one of you will make it for the people who are sitting next to you. Yeah. So only one out of three yeah. will actually make it. So you have to decide whether or not you want it bad enough. Mm -hmm. Because what they did was they really, really hammered at home mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the, 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 the facts and the stats surrounding yeah. surrounding relapse and death. Yeah. Um, and it's hard and they had to be that way. They mm -hmm. had to be that way. And uh, mm -hmm. and I decided I'm, I'm not, I'm not. That's not going to be me. Well, that's yeah. the, you, what they've done exactly right. It's got to be hard hitting. Yeah, people, yeah, have, got to, yeah. people have got to realize yeah. what really can happen. Mm. That's what we do in our workshops. And for, yeah, it's good. It's good for me in terms of I'm talking to people or, or young people, whoever it is, and it's coming from someone who's been there. So mm -hmm. that helps, and hopefully we get our message across. Yeah, you know, because okay. yeah, yeah, it's the not nice place to be. Okay, mm. so getting towards the end of the show now, mm. what drives you guys on? Because obviously you've had your problems in the past. You mm. try not to look back and take it. Yeah, you can't you want to look, look forward. Yeah, mm. what's driving you forward? I mean, for me personally, um, I want to make um, a positive out of a negative. Uh, I know where I've been. I know what I've lost. In, but I also feel fortunate. So to me, um, money, material things, you know, they can be replaced. Your yeah. life can't be. Uh, so the way I look at it is that I'm putting something back. I'm trying to help people, stop people from going down my pathway. So that's what that's what drives me, and, and hopefully, you know, Red Card organisation will grow and grow and grow. So mm -hmm. that's what that's what drives me on. Okay, and what about yourself, John? Oh, there's there's this. I don't know. One thing. There's there's, there's three things. There's mm. first is my my faith. Mm -hmm. That that's I'm 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 so grateful for that that I found that in recovery, mm -hmm. um, and. Um, I want to help people. I want to use my own experience because I've got a lot of experience, which is, but then they aren't good experiences. But I can use them to definitely, help definitely other people, you know, that the, yeah. the, the, yeah. that are struggling with similar experiences yeah. in the in the here yeah. and now. Yeah. And also um, myself, and uh, you know, coming back to the the title of the book, Seer, mm. you know, I, I did awaken to something. There was an, an ability which I believe we all have, which which is which is a gift that we all we all can have. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, myself and another filmmaker are in the process now of about to make a film documentary about this this kind of experience that, that people can have. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you know, a lot of people ah. do have those spiritual experiences. Yeah. 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 I mean, it was. Um, I mean, after that experience that I had in rehab, when I kind of felt and heard something, mm -hmm. it was. Um, mm -hmm. What we want to do is we we will deliver due diligence. You know, is it a mental health problem? You know, I mean, I I will be analysed by a psychiatrist. We're looking at that at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, I'm okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, I think I am. But um, but there's enough stuff written down throughout history to do with this kind of ability it's that not people new, have. Is it? no. This is not new mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. This 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 has been going on well, for for a long, long time. Yeah. And um, so yeah. So that's that's what um, that's what we're going to be doing. We, we need to deliver due diligence, and uh, and we will do that because we're both experienced. I'm a, I come from a journalistic background, yeah. and yeah. Simon comes from a, a, a kind of. Uh, producer director drama yeah, uh, background yeah. and um and 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 yeah so there's there's lots going on uh, at the moment and um 
and uh, I just uh, I just just keep just keep taking one one step at a time just yeah. keep moving forward you and you're going to do my next film aren't you I'm going to do Tony's film yeah. well done it's going to be I tell you what it's going to be a cracker what's, we're going to be what's it what's it going to be about yeah we're, we're going to we talk about it but it's about, it's about you know my story basically yeah. what I've been through because I think mm-hmm. um, I'm fortunate yeah as I said before we're both fortunate we're yeah. sitting here talking to you you know yeah, yeah. we're doing this you know so he's been close to death you know I'm fortunate I never got to that point yeah. uh, of taking my own life so I think it's important that I continue to share my story yeah, sure. and the wider I can spread it the better okay you know? well on that point can I be an extra in the background just, possibly just possibly, waving yeah. hello <laughs> mum something like that in the background you know? yeah yeah, yeah come along. <laughs> we're gonna we'll, we'll be going to a couple of football grounds yeah, and, and stuff like that I'm yeah. be in the crowd yeah, yeah. then at yeah. least yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> so so this is a nice link John you, you'll, you'll appreciate this one Sia yeah that, that's the name of your book yeah mm-hmm. What's in the future for you? For me? Yeah. Oh, that's a brilliant question. You like that? Yeah. That's well, a do, brilliant do you like that question. link? That was really journalistic, <laughs> wasn't it? Brilliant. <laughs> um, brilliant. I think um, <laughs> this this is not me sitting on the fence. Yeah, go There's on. lots of things I could say that I hope for for the mm. future for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I do have premonitions. Yes, I do log them and keep them and show them to people. Um, but that's that's by the that's not to do with me. Yeah. Mm. Um, I try and keep it in the here and now, you know, these days. I try and, if I can focus on doing the right thing today, then the right thing will happen tomorrow. Yeah, I do, I believe that, yeah. 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 Okay. I think things will follow, you do the right thing, yeah. you, you yeah. work hard, things will follow. I had a similar conversation with a guy the other day who sort of was doing some social media work and yeah. uh, he was just putting stuff out there and out there and out there and getting nowhere, let's be 100% honest. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like you say guys things tend to happen yeah, they? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. one after the other now I've spoken to him recently and uh, he hasn't got enough time in the day with the work yeah, that he's yeah. picked up and, and, and he's, he's trying doing to it. do you know, he's project. doing it from, from his heart he's doing it you know for yeah, real yeah, yeah. 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 there's yeah. absolutely no point in worrying about there's no point in me worrying about what I think might happen mm. in the future because mm. It's not. It's not going to work out that way because if I had any control, if I had any real control over what's yeah. going to happen to me in the future, then that would also apply to what happened to me in the past. Mm-hmm. Then I, I could have been able. I could have could have stopped it, yeah. things from happening. But yeah. these things happened, and they happened for a reason. Mm-hmm. So, so I kind of surrender myself to the yeah. fact that as long as I just and it's not easy. Don't get me wrong. I, I I'm really. I'm re- I was going almost swore there. I'm, <laughs> I'm, re- I'm really bad at it because I'm just like everyone else. I'm just like, oh, I'll worry about this. I want this. I want this. I'm. Yeah. But I tend to find if I just kind of do do what I can mm-hmm. in today, then it will kind of work out. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I think just <clears throat> touching on something Andy regarding because obviously John's been through alcohol. There's some I've been through gambling addiction. So in terms of the links between uh, alcohol, drugs, and um, gambling you know there's there is huge links i mean we're going to nottingham next week to a rehab center mm-hmm. uh, and, the, and these guys and girls is drugs and alcohol right but they're what they're saying to us is that through the programs that these guys are on their clients are on they've found that their drugs and you know substance misuse extend from gambling addiction right so i think there is a big link <clears throat> between the whole the whole it's a whole mm-hmm. cycle oh yeah 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 mm-hmm. no the, you you i'm actually really glad you brought that up yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's not just one thing yeah it's not so, just yeah. one thing because when i was in rehab we were banned from going near like arcades and mm, stuff like that really? yeah, yeah. banned from going to tattoo parlours yeah. gyms what tattoo parlours yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, no no what's that got to do with it <laughs> no it's it, because it, it, uh, an, an, an addict head yeah. I have I have one <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. yeah I I'm, I can become fixated on on, on, on things, things. Oh, right. doing different things yeah. Yeah. okay yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I can also say as well that, that I'll just as an example yeah mm-hmm. that's been driving me nuts that's your my book your book since yeah, we started on. doing this yeah yeah because I know. I just want to keep it like that, so you can maybe I see know it. What you're saying. But I want it to be like that, so it's perfectly aligned. Oh my god! Oh, oh right, this is right. like an OCD yeah. type. It's thing very well, slight yeah. OCD. Yeah. Oh, a little bit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a get them books straight. Come <laughs> on, <laughs> I'm not having them books yeah. like that. Straight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 I'm um, a perfectionist when it comes to organisation, things like that. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm mm, real okay. perfectionist. Everything has to be right and time perfect. I'll, I'll send emails the day before something when I've been sending five previous. I've sent those. You know. You want tomorrow? You want? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like that. But okay. Yeah. yeah. I, on the other hand, I'm chaos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what? There's no right or wrong, is there? You yeah, know, yeah. Even even some people where I've been doing these podcasts, some of the people that you presume they're running big companies and you know they're they, they're outward perception 
is that these guys are really organised on the ball. Yeah. Some of them are not, not as organised no, 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 as no, you'd no, think, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of the ones that are really busy, of course, they've got to have a little bit of chaos involved because they're trying to do so much. So much, yeah. You know, mm. a little bit like us when we were setting up here, guys. You know, yeah, <laughs> a little yeah. bit of chaos going Carnage, on. Carnage, mate. Yeah. Carnage. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. When you've got so much to do, yeah. you know. It's a lot yeah. on, so yeah. I wouldn't hold that against them. Yeah. So how can people get hold of you, John and Tony, <clears> if, <throat> if they want to find out more about you? Tony. Okay, Wilson. yeah, so basically I'm on LinkedIn, Tony Kelly LinkedIn. Um, the, the website for the organisation, which has all our contact details, which is Kelly's Red Card Consultancy.co.uk. So they can contact me through the website and obviously the books on Amazon, etc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, I you can get hold of me on, on Facebook, I think. Um, yeah. John Thompson, there's no P in the, in the, in the Thompson. And mm-hmm. um, just send me a Link, friend request. And LinkedIn as well. And I'm on LinkedIn, yeah, I'm on yeah, LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, uh, John Thompson, filmmaker. Um, so, so yeah, I'm on different different, different social media, okay. uh, Twitter as well, and uh, Instagram. So, yeah, I'm, I'm on. Um, and I'm sure that there'll be a, a kind of uh, pics on, on to accompany the, the kind of the podcast. Yeah, and stuff sure. Like that. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll do so, something yeah. like that, yeah. yeah. So that's it, guys. Thanks for coming. And we, I know you're going to talk on afterwards. You've got lots of other things that mm. we're going to talk about and discuss on yeah. Facebook Live, etc. Mm. But for the podcast show, thank you very much. Cheers, Andy. Cheers, Cheers Andy. Mate. Thank Thanks. you very much. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And until next time, start transforming your wealth and health now.